If you hear a child crying, it's my granddaughter, so get over it. <laughs> she is a soloist, that's correct. It's a wonderful Valentine's uh, present for Letitia and I uh, to have Winnie and my daughter Maggie and her husband Dexter uh, visiting with us. So, Our scripture lesson this first Sunday of the season of Lent, six Sundays that are a progression to the cross of Christ. We read today about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. I'll be reading from Luke's gospel from the fourth chapter. Will you bow with me as we pray? God of signs and wonders, we come to your word again and again, seeking understanding and the new life it offers. By the power of your Holy Spirit, illuminate our hearts and minds so that we may believe this testimony and have eternal life. Amen. Jesus returned from the Jordan River full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for forty days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterwards Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, It is written, People won't live only by bread. Next, the devil led him to a high place and showed him in a single instance all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to him, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It has been entrusted to me, and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, You will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you're, you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, It has been said, Don't test the Lord your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. There is one thing that I don't miss about school. Well, there's actually a lot of things I don't miss about school. But the one thing that I don't miss is being graded or tested. After I had graduated from seminary, about 10 years later, I entered into the Doctor of Ministry program and I began to be graded with papers and letters or numbers. Now, how many of you will be grading me after the sermon this morning? Yeah, nervous laughter back there. I know it, you know it. Grading is just simply a part of our lives. And in school, I always wondered really what was the value to a test. After all, it doesn't really show you all that you know. It is simply a snapshot in that moment of time whether you can pass the test or not. Now, I always liked true-false questions. You either knew it or you didn't know it, but if you guessed, there was a 50% chance that you would get the right answer. Now, multiple choice were not my favorites, 
because sometimes the answers were so similar, you know, it kind of faked you out a little bit. Is this really what I should choose or not? And when it comes to essays, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to bull your way through a test, don't we? But all of it raises our anxieties. It brings us to that point in which we may feel bad about ourselves or we're just simply terrified. But you know, when it comes to it, the most important tests in life are really those which are pass-fail. You either pass it or you don't. GE tests its light bulbs, they either pass or they don't. Apple and all of its computers, they test their hardware and it either passes or it doesn't. And even in medical tests, these are pass-fail. You go to the doctor, the doctor says, you know, we should probably order some tests. It always raises my anxiety. Shoot, I, I get kind of worked up just over having my blood pressure taken because I want to do well. I want to pass. So she orders her test, and then she says, I'll need you to come in to discuss these. Heart's beating a little bit faster. I can feel myself sweating. Can't you? And then she starts talking about results. But you don't really hear what she's saying. Until finally she says, the results were benign. And suddenly everything is right in the world once again. You have not received a death sentence, but a life sentence. The point is that tests determine whether the subject that is being tested performs to the level or the standard to which it was created. Everything, from the little sticker that you find in your underwear, you know the one that says, inspected by number 12? <laughs> Makes me wonder if all you have are 12 inspectors. <laughs> to the testing of a rocket engine, we all want to know that they will perform to the standard of which they were created because none of us would fly in an airplane or drive a car or ride in a boat that had not been tested. And in the same way, we would not follow a savior or believe or trust in him who is not also been tested. You see, in Luke's gospel, the word is oftentimes translated temptations, but it can also be translated as testing. A test of who Jesus is as the Son of God. Three times the devil came to him with that question, if you are the Son of God, then do these things. But Jesus rejects all tests. He has been in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights. He is literally starving when the devil comes to him at his weakest physical moment possible. And this past test, this past fail test, Jesus revealed who he truly is. By resisting the devil, by relying in the power of the Holy Spirit that indwelled in him, he was able to win for us more than just well done, but he was able to win for us eternal life itself. 
Luke makes it clear that this is not the last time that Jesus will be tempted or tested. There will be many more, just as we are tempted or tested every single day. But friends, Jesus was tested to a higher level than we. Not the kind of Girl Scout cookie testing. Oh, by the way, they're at HEB right now. <laughs> Not the kind of testing that we try to curb our tongue or try not to eat as much or smoke as much or whatever we would think would somehow be a part of our dedication and devotion to God. But instead, he was tempted to that level even though he was perfect, it was still a real temptation. You see, we as human beings, we are quick to say, well, you know, you're so ugly, I bet your mama didn't love you. Bless your heart. As if simply saying that is going to make anything okay. And in a similar way, we say, you know, I'm just human. I'm only human. And humans do make mistakes. And Jesus, being the Son of God, being fully human and fully divine, he had his limitations to, for time and space. He could only be in one place at one time, and he struggled with temptations just as we do. We don't know exactly what they were. Perhaps they were for his own gratification, for his own power. Perhaps it was a temptation to not do what God had asked him to do because he wanted to be liked or loved, but God had a different way for him. And that was the way of lifting up the holy God whose life he gave for each one of us. The sacrifice of Jesus is, is multifaceted in his birth, in his life, good Lord, being a, an adolescent, that should have been a test enough. In his betrayal and arrest and mock trial, sinners to death, whipped, beaten, crucified as a criminal, he died. He was raised, and he was ascended. All of this is a part of the salvation act that in each case it points to Jesus being the Son of God, of being the perfect one who saves those who are imperfect, the sinless one who saves those who are not right with God. Hebrews 4.15 says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every way has been tested, yet without sin. Would you have passed that kind of test? In the face of people cursing you, and mocking you, beating you, would you have said what Jesus said, Father, forgive them? They know not what they do. I don't know that I would. I'm not sure that I could. But because Christ faced that test. 
the ultimate test of the cross, and he chose to live his life in obedience. We have been rescued, redeemed, saved from certain death. Friends, when we give in to temptation, we make light of the sacrifice of Christ. It is not as if we say, well, Jesus was able to accept the temptations and overcome them, and that doesn't really apply to me. I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. I can hurt both friend and family and enemy. Then we fail to live up to God's original purpose for our lives. When we remember, though, we have a Savior who was tempted as we are tempted, but prevailed, who passed the test, who gave us freedom over sin and death, and won for us eternal life. Then we begin to understand how important it is for us that Jesus is the Son of God. May God give him all glory and praise and honor now and forever. Amen.